Uh, Lord Boswell, you're the chairman of the House of Lords European Union Committee and the committee have been looking for some months now at the role of national parliaments in the European Union and, and scrutinising the European Union. What's the key recommendation in your report? Well, it's simply that uh, parliaments need to develop the habit of collaboration between themselves. If they're prepared to talk to each other and talk to the European institutions and they're prepared through their national scrutiny mechanisms to put pressures on their own government, they could achieve more than they could do individually and they could, I think, do a good job for the European Union in difficult times. Now there's clearly been an increase in the interest in issues around uh, the role of national parliaments in Europe recently. Um, why do you think that is and what provoked the committee to, to look at this issue? Well certainly we're hearing a great deal about it. I mean if I meet uh, national parliamentarians or representatives of uh, any of the countries of the European Union, uh, there is a readiness to do something. There is a lot of comment about the need to do something in the media and elsewhere and among academics. What our report is trying to do is not to find the final answers to all this, because I think it's a debate that will go on for a very long time, but it's to start distilling some practical suggestions from which we could select the most important, uh, so people could think about what they could do together and what they could do in their relations with the, um, the other organisations they deal with, uh, to make sure we actually do something about it. And moving on to the government's role in Europe, um, do you think the scrutiny of that role can be improved by Parliament in this country? Well, number one, I think scrutiny is a core business for the two committees in the House of Lords and the House of Commons. Uh, we should take that very seriously and anything else we do is not derogatory from that job. And I think one of the good aspects of the report we've just published is that we've taken examples of good practice and good thinking from other countries and tried to bring them into our thoughts. An example of that is uh, the Commission's, European Commission's work programme. Uh, we have always paid some concern, attention to that. We've noticed how the Dutch colleagues use it as almost the platform for an intense consideration in their committee of European Commission actions we're trying to borrow that from them and similarly the Danes have a real interest in a pre-consultation with their ministers as well as merely getting them in after European councils. Uh, and thinking about the um, reasoned opinion procedure which is one role that national parliaments have, uh, people may know of the yellow card process, um, do you think that could be improved? Yes, I mean certainly the reasoned opinion is the one which people know about and is in the Lisbon Treaty, although it isn't called a yellow card in there. Um, and it's the one that hasn't been used very often. Now we do make some specific proposals for making it more effective by slight increases in its coverage, by a longer period of time, and also by calling for the Commission to engage in good faith in response, uh, rather than simply brush it off, as has happened. Uh, and we also reflect on the possibility of what I might call a forward gear in terms of the role of national parliaments in floating ideas to the Commission to work up uh, rather than simply complaining when things are not to their liking. Now all that is in a series of ideas which we put in the report um, but all I would say is we shouldn't be dominated in our thinking by the yellow card procedure. It is a weapon, a vehicle, a sanction, a reserve power, which is important. But it's not the only thing national parliaments can do, either in influencing their own governments or in working with other national parliaments to influence the European institutions. Uh, you, you mentioned the Commission there. Do you get any sense that the Commission are prepared to take um, national parliaments seriously uh, in, in that process? Well, I think go all the way back to President Barroso launching the political dialogue, there is certainly strong lip service and I think in the shape of certain commissioners a genuine commitment to want to do this and to consult and an understanding that there's actually a positive benefit for the Commission if it gets into a grown-up discussion at an early stage rather than relies on bouncing things through at the very last stage or taking no notice of yellow cards. 
Uh, other commissioners, perhaps in some cases, have been a little more reticent. And our view is that the Commission needs, in effect, to commit itself seriously to the process. The new Commission will have to do that. And if they do, I think we can then discuss things in good faith and constructively with them. Uh, you've talked about the uh, importance of engagement between National Parliaments and the Commission before you get to that reasoned opinion stage. Um, what's been the issue up to now? Uh, are there any reasons why that hasn't been achieved and what can be done to encourage that early engagement? Well, we have, as a House of Lords Select Committee, have always tended to do this. And, for example, in recent time, we did a report on the European External Action Service, which played into the Commission's own consideration, reviewing the first two years of its operation. So that's an, a practical example of upfront collaboration. And, of course, other national parliaments have made similar contributions. It's always been there as a possibility, um, perhaps even before the political dialogue was launched. Uh, but the question is, has it been a habit? Has it been a practice? And I think two perspectives we open. First of all, we need to say it does depend on the national parliament. I mean, not everybody has the resources, need or inclination to engage on everything, and we need to accept that. But also, um, we do need to look at various sensible ways in which we can gather and collaborate, make use of modern technology to communicate, perhaps uh, put together joint reports or ideas uh, and then make sure that somebody will respond in the Commission.